Astronomers have spent decades utilizing a range of technologies, such as satellites that orbit the Earth and telescopes that are stationed on the ground, in order to examine the enigmatic and burning layers of this object. The Sun is an enormous sphere that is totally made of plasma and reaches temperatures that are incomprehensibly high. Hello and welcome everyone. This is AWZ News. In this episode we reveal secrets of our solar system. Stay with us. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. We have been able to see the sun come up over the horizon ever since we first set foot on this planet, and with it comes the anticipation of a whole new day that will be full with brightness and warmth. What does it appear to be when it is in such close proximity to us? We are fully aware of what it seems to be as it travels across the beautiful blue sky above us, and we are also aware of what it seems to be depending on where the other planets in the solar system are located. But how does it appear when one is a great distance away from it? What exactly do we see when we peer down onto the surface of the Sun? The Sun serves as a basis for our understanding of other stars since it is the only star that we are able to study in great detail. Other stars can only be studied in limited ways. The better we are at understanding other star systems, the more we will be able to figure out about our home galaxy, the Milky Way. Over the course of the last few years, NASA has been able to successfully communicate with our nearest stellar neighbor. This was made possible by the Parker Solar Probe, which navigated its way into the perilous atmosphere of our nearest star and captured this breathtaking time-lapse footage along the way. The footage was taken at a time when the probe was in its closest possible vicinity to the Sun. In it, coronal streamers, which are streaks of electrically charged gas and plasma that speed out into space, can be seen. An example of the weird phenomena that can be seen at the Sun as one gets closer to it. These strange phenomena become more often the closer one gets. However, in order to do research on the Sun, going there is not a prerequisite in and of itself. Astronomers have spent decades utilizing a range of technologies, such as satellites that orbit the Earth and telescopes that are stationed on the ground, in order to examine the enigmatic and burning layers of this object. The Sun is an enormous sphere that is totally made of plasma and reaches temperatures that are incomprehensibly high. Since it does not possess a solid mass to begin with, it does not have a surface that can be defined in the same way that the Earth's surface does. Instead, it is made up of layers that are almost entirely made up of hydrogen and helium, as a result, the surface of the Sun is thought to be the first layer that can be seen on its surface. The process that is referred to as nuclear fusion is the one that is accountable for the generation of the light that shines down upon the surface of the Earth during the course of each day. This event has its beginnings deep inside the core of the Sun. Photons are the primary components of light, they move back and forth within its core, gradually finding their way to the surface while continually coming into contact with atoms. Light is composed of photons, which move back and forth within its core. Photons are the fundamental constituents of light. After tens of thousands of years, photons will reach a level where the plasma is less dense, allowing them to escape into space. This will allow the plasma to return to its original state. Photons will be able to go further into space once they have reached this level, which is conventionally referred to as the surface of the Sun but is actually a layer known as the photosphere. Despite the fact that we call it the surface of the Sun, the photosphere is actually the first layer of the solar atmosphere. The photosphere is made up of solar particles. The layer that extends the farthest below us is the one that we are able to observe firsthand. It has a thickness of approximately 400 kilometers, which is equivalent to 250 miles. This is a rather thin layer of material when compared to the size of the Sun, which accounts for 99.86% of the total mass in the solar system. Temperatures there can reach far above 5,500 degrees Celsius, or 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is an extreme level of heat bringing the temperature up to the point where it is possible for diamond to be melted. 
This magnificent footage was obtained on the surface of the Sun, and it depicts in unparalleled detail the dynamic cell-like formations that are moving and evolving in shape and size. The Sun is a star, and its surface is called the photosphere. You are currently looking at the very last layer of the Sun before light is emitted into space. This layer is called the photosphere. Before being sent in all directions, photons had already been around for thousands of years, some of them make it all the way to Earth after traveling for 8 minutes and 20 seconds. The movie was collected by using the Daniel K. Inoue Solar Telescope, and the photographs that it contains are currently the ones that have the greatest quality among those that have been taken of the photosphere to this day. It was able to make out details that were as close as 18 miles, or 30 kilometers, away. The process through which hot plasma from deeper within the sun travels to the surface, where it cools, and then sinks back down again is referred to as convection. The term convection describes the term that explains the process. This gives the impression that bubbles are forming within the photosphere. The same process can be seen at work, for instance, when water is heated in a saucepan on the stove and begins to boil and bubble. While the dark boundaries are where the plasma cools down and falls back into the sun's core, the dazzling areas contain hot plasma that has just begun to rise. According to some calculations, the area of a single cell is comparable to that of the state of Texas in the United States of America. There are also enormous dark areas on the photosphere that are known as sunspots. These spots are dispersed all across the surface of the sun. These planet-sized zones have a darker look because they are much cooler than their surrounds, in fact, they are around 2000 to 3000 degrees cooler than their surroundings. This results in a much lower temperature. Sunspots are the result of disruptions in the massive magnetic fields that surround the sun. These magnetic fields are so powerful that they prevent part of the heat from the sun's surface from escaping and reaching the surface. Magnetic fields on the sun are responsible for causing solar flares, which are intense energy explosions that happen very quickly. These magnetic fields are extremely dynamic, they are constantly entwining, crossing, and rearranging themselves with one another, and they are the primary cause of solar flares. When solar flares and coronal mass ejections both take place at the same time, the coronal mass ejections become giant bubbles that contain billions of tons of charged particles and explode out into space at extraordinarily high speeds. It is possible to observe flares and these ejections happening at the same time in some cases. As is evident from this video, being a witness to these immense bursts of force is an experience that will stick with you forever. After all, these are the most significant and catastrophic events that have the potential to take place in the solar system. Even though we see the sun shining in the clear blue skies above us on a daily basis, it wasn't until very recently that we obtained the tools and the knowledge to see behind the sun's dazzling brightness and study the peculiar bubbling surface of the sun. This is despite the fact that we see the sun beaming in the clear blue skies above us on a daily basis. By having a better understanding of the photosphere and closely monitoring the magnetic fields, astronomers are able to anticipate the approach of potentially harmful solar storms. This allows for more accurate preparation and response. These storms have the ability to cause damage to satellites as well as infrastructure on Earth that provides power. In addition to this, they are able to put sun-related hypotheses to the test and attempt to find answers to some of the sun's most puzzling questions. This is all for now thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell.